Hey everybody, and welcome to Northern Land Plays Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. We're just gonna get started here. Uh, now you might be wondering, first off, why do you sound so different, Northern Lion? Also, why do you have two save files here? Well, we're gonna be playing on the third one. Uh, I sound so different because I'm a little bit sick right now, but I'm cresting. I think I'm gonna be better. Like a beautiful tail of a humpback whale, my voice is coming out of this murky, mucus-infested water. And now that I've grossed out anybody that would have been a new audience member, hey everybody who's a diehard fan. In any case, we're gonna be playing Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This is the new third-person action game from Platinum Games, slash the new game in the Metal Gear fiction. We're gonna get started here, and I, I am gonna play through the tutorial on our new story mode, because I just wanna show off, we're gonna be playing on normal mode, by the way, because uh, normal is difficult enough for me, believe you me. Uh, we're gonna play through the tutorial here, just so we can get kind of a feel, a bumper, if you will, for the game mechanics before we actually get started. I've uh, beaten this game, I got a, a pre-release copy from Konami, and I've reviewed it, so the review should be up simultaneous with this video, so you can check that out if you're interested in a more critical approach to the video. Uh, but for now... Is he actually talking? Because in my headphones he's not actually talking, but that's okay, Doctor! This is not an issue, I'll just wait for him to shut up, and then I will continue onwards. Because he's teaching us right now uh, about our ninja run. I just want to check one of our settings here very quickly. If I go to uh, options, I want to make sure it's not in Japanese. Good, it is in English, alright. So we're playing as Raiden here. Uh, we have a number of abilities, like uh, our sword attack and whatnot, which we'll explain in a bit. But for now, right trigger gives us the ninja run, which is a way that allows us to kind of parkour our way through the environment uh, in a fairly dynamic fashion and an improvised fashion. So basically all I'm doing here is holding the run button. This is the game's way of letting you know, like, hey, I'm pretty cool, I've got this parkour button. Uh, and they are also going to teach us how to attack. Now the basis of this game, you know, if you've never played a third-person action game before, is that we're going to be using our sword and a variety of other weapons that we'll eventually find uh, in order to destroy these enemies. We're going to be creating combos on the fly eventually, but for now, I guess, all we are tasked with doing is uh, occasionally hitting these guys and uh, one shot will kill them, which, uh, believe you me, is not true for the remainder of the game. Uh, but we'll just cut these guys up to get a little bit of a feel for how things go. One of the major complaints I have about this game is that I feel like the tutorial is woefully inadequate uh, to teach you how to actually use the abilities at your disposal. I like this game overall, I don't want to spoil the review. It's got some problems, uh, not least of which is the fact that it is very, very short, which means that this is going to be a short Let's Play. Probably on the order of, um, you know, maybe 10 to 12 episodes. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like this game overall, but it does have some problems. This is going to be the last tutorial that we get before we actually get into uh, the level. So let's um, do some combat here. Basically, the, w the thing that makes this unique compared to uh, some, I uh, botched that miserably, some uh, third-person action games is that we don't actually have a blocking or dodging ability. All that we have instead is a parry. Can I eat this guy's spine yet? No. The other thing that makes it unique is that we can chop this dude up into, you know, 35,000 pieces if we wanted to and watch his body just fall to the ground in a red mist, which is kind of awesome, actually. I kind of like that a lot, but yeah, what I was saying earlier, we don't actually have a dodge or a block ability. Instead, all we have is this parry, which is executed by uh, just hitting the attack button in the direction of your enemy on the analog stick. Oh, that didn't kill him. I made a huge mistake here. Anyway, we can still cut him up. Um, yeah, so you have to execute that parry effectively if you are to succeed at all, because you have no other ability, basically, for defense. Which I guess is what he's teaching me right now, so I guess I was supposed to just mash buttons and destroy those guys before. What can I say? I'm an advanced level teacher, Doctor. Or an advanced level pupil, I guess, in this situation. I love this dude's haircut. Why the long face? Seriously, though, that guy does have probably the longest sides of a head I've ever seen in my entire life. So this guy's gonna attack, we're gonna parry, and then counterattack. Enemies like this are basically cannon fodder. Uh, in a, we should be able to kill them. That guy's already dead, I think, yeah. I, I'm botching my, uh, blade mode stuff a little bit. Blade mode is where I go into that mode where I, you know, execute 55,000 foes, or 55,000 blows all at the same time. Foes, blows, boats and hoes, doesn't matter to me, man. So, I think Doctor is teaching us about blade mode now. Now, there's a lot of mechanics that Doctor is sadly not mentioning here at all. And it's a little bit disappointing because it means when you first get started with the game, you have a very basic idea of what to do, but you don't really know what to do overall, which is uh, kind of, like I said, the tutorial feels to me to be woefully inadequate. So just give me a second here. We should be able to enter blade mode in a second. And by doing that, God, I botched that miserably again. It's much easier to do uh, in actual combat, believe it or not. Is that going to be the end of the tutorial? That's the end of the tutorial, and that's going to introduce us to the game right away. In a way, I admire it for not really uh, pushing us to do, uh, you know, an hour-long tutorial before getting involved, but I, I wish it was a little bit longer. Anyway, I'm going to let the story kind of play for itself here. I'm not a huge 
Metal Gear fan, so I don't know how this fits into the mythos necessarily. So uh, for those of you who are watching this for the story, feel free to uh, you know sit back, get a drink, and enjoy, because I'm going to be back in about you know four or five minutes. We've come so far in just three short years. The sign of a strong leader, sir. No. The will of a strong people. And one very able advisor. Thank you, sir. Your team deserves credit as well. Mr. Lightning Bolt. Just doing our job, Mr. Prime Minister. I must admit, I once thought of groups like yours as opportunists, enablers of war. But you've trained our new army well. Order has returned sooner than expected. Perhaps I was wrong about these private military companies. We prefer private security providers, sir. Most of Maverick's contracts do focus on security. Yes, well, the security can mean many things. There's a saying I like. One sword keeps another in the sheath. Sometimes the threat of violence alone is a deterrent. Sometimes by taking a life, others can be preserved. He looks like Jane Lynch from Glee. It's the code the samurai lived by. Hmm. A soldier and a philosopher. You are full of surprises, Mr. Lightning Bolt. I could say the same about you, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> what is happening? Someone's blocking the lead vehicle. Hold on. Clear the road! This is official state business! Stay calm. He's got friends on our 12. Raiden. I'm on it. Guard the Prime Minister. <laughs> All right, so very shortly, finally, we are going to get a chance to actually get involved with some combat here. I say finally, but I actually think it's a pretty strong opening cutscene. Uh, you know, sets the stage quite nicely. I've got to laugh though, because when I got the press materials for this game from Konami, they were like, we're estimating or expecting that the game is going to have an M rating. I was like, yeah, no shit. Watching uh, Sam, who was the, uh, the red swordsman, uh, cut that dude in half in like 60 pieces and then get showered by a red mist. I was like, yeah, M probably seems to be a safe bet. So our sword is strong enough to, uh, you know, turn the environment into limbo around us. And then we're going to get involved in some very simple combat. I'm going to be talking over uh, all of the 
VO for the most part, except for the cutscenes. The cutscenes kind of speak for themselves, so I'm going to let those go for the most part, except for some occasional wisecracks, because I think I'm much funnier than I actually am. But for once, we are actually going to get involved with some real combat against some live enemies here. So let's wait. I don't need your damn tutorial game. Uh, these guys are going to be super easy to kill, I believe. We're just going to wait for one of them to come in with a parry. And after a single attack, one blade mode is going to be enough. I'm not going to do... Uh, too much blade moding, I think. Unnecessary blade moding. Uh, but I will, you know, cut people up like that. Eventually, once we get finished with this first tutorial level, uh, blade mode will become much more important because we're gonna have to cut dudes in half and eat their spines, basically, in order to regenerate our health. So, we're just gonna murder this dude. They're getting a little bit stronger now. Um, trust me, blade mode becomes a lot more interesting a little bit later. But for now, we're just gonna, you know, make up some combos by mashing the X and Y buttons in, uh, alternating succession. Come ahead and cut through these guys. It's gonna start very easy. I mean partly it's easy because again I've played this before uh, And partly it's gonna be easy because it's the tutorial mission But this game does get substantially more difficult as we get further and further along uh, We're just gonna cut through this dude Like so you will have to worry about defensive options or I will have to worry about defensive options a little bit more in the future Because uh, I don't want to get hit like that you get ranked on each uh, spell of combat if you get hit the maximum rank you can get is a I believe so I'm already uh, you know, I've hurt myself a little bit. I don't even know if I need to fight this guy. I think instead I can just cut through this barrier. Kind of get on my merry way. Otherwise, I might have to fight, like, an unlimited spell of enemies there. Again, I'll shut up and let the, uh, cutscene do the talking here. We're about to get introduced to one of the main villains of the game, who will become, uh, very important as the story progresses. Cutscenes overall, I feel, uh, done really well in this game. Now, okay, we're getting introduced to a Metal Gear. Then we'll be introduced to a villain who will play a very important role in the game. But yes, I, I do enjoy the cutscenes in this game. It's melodramatic and uh, occasionally hilariously scripted as they are. Ah, oh, my arms! I did not see that coming! Nice butt plate, Raiden. <laughs> so you're Jack. What do you want with the Prime Minister? I want him dead. Nothing personal, of course. Africa's just getting a bit too peaceful. What? Business ain't been the same since they shut down SOP. A clean break from the war economy. Huh. Well, some of us lack that economy. How's an honest warmonger supposed to make a living? This is your answer? <laughs> Don't do it! Don't worry now. I won't. Not while he's still useful. <laughs> So long. As I was playing this game, all I could think of is how much better the like villain would be if he was voiced by Tom Waits, but I guess that's true for pretty much any game. If you don't know who Tom Waits is, he sounds a little bit like I do right now. The gravelly voice and the bourbon-soaked vocal cord nodules. Anyway, we're gonna fight this Metal Gear here. We don't spend too, too much time actually fighting Metal Gears uh, over the course of the game. There's tiny ones we fight now and then. Uh, but as far as I can remember, this is the, the, the big Metal Gear Spectacle fight. Actually, you know, to avoid spoiling things, I guess there is one more a little bit later. Um, but first things first, we're just going to lock on to uh, one of these targets here. As long as we use the ninja run, we should be fairly uh, okay. 
I should probably not be attacking his face, I should be attacking his legs instead. Uh, but sometimes the targeting system in this game, sometimes the camera in this game in general can be a little bit wonky. Anyway, every boss, and uh, this is a, a habit or a, a trend that we are going to notice fairly shortly, every boss has a weak points, and the general way that these boss fights go is you attack those weak points, uh, eventually, of course, they become more difficult, their attacks become more difficult to dodge, uh, otherwise it would become incredibly boring. Uh, but after going through this, you go through blade mode, you cut up their shields a little bit, and then they become weaker and weaker, and eventually, you take their health, which you can see down there in the uh, bottom right corner, down to 0%, if all goes well. But for right now, again, this is basically the tutorial boss fight. The tutorial mission is like half an hour long, uh, so it, it's certainly, you know, it's, it's not a short introduction to the game, but I wish there was a little bit more kind of like, uh, very non-discreetly, very obviously told tutorial as opposed to this. Learning on the job's cool enough, you know, I'm alright with that, but I, I wish I had a little bit more, uh, you know, in-class training, if you will. So I'm just gonna focus on this other leg, which is shielded right now. I'm not sure if this is the best way to take out this boss, but provided I don't get hit too much, I'm just trying to get as massive ranks as I can. When I beat the game the first time, my overall rank through the game was C, which was pretty disappointing, but uh, I would be surprised if I did much better here. This Metal Gear doesn't better here. Metal Gear, not trying to rhyme, total accident. Uh, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, do like an FC of this game, like never get hit or anything like that. All I am trying to do is do the best that I can do and show off this game, because I think this is a game that, you know, quite honestly, I, I would encourage you, before I go too far into my thoughts, I, I'd encourage you to, um... Check out my review to see what my overall thoughts are, because this is a game that I feel like a lot of people are going to be interested in watching Let's Plays for, because the game itself is fun. I like this game uh, on a moment-to-moment -moment, like combat level quite a bit, but it's so short that I feel like a lot of people are going to hesitate when it comes to buying it. Uh, so we're going to cut this guy down to 0.1%. Afterwards, we should have like a spectacle to kind of end this fight, yes. So he's going to shoot some missiles or something at us. I for kind of forget how this goes, actually. We're just going to get out of the way of the plasma cutter. You think you're Isaac Clarke, motherfucker? And unlike the characters in, in Prometheus, oh, that's what we do there. Uh, I know that you just run to the side when something is coming straight at you. There are quick time events in the game that show up occasionally, but you know, they're fairly sparse throughout. And they allow us to do cool things like fucking power bomb this Metal Gear, which is fairly solid. Uh, and then by running up this boss. Actually, quick time events factor pretty heavily into badass scenes like that. Typically, like the very end sequence of a boss fight is. Settled with a quick time event, but it's difficult to lose those quick time events, I assure you. So never fear. Alright, so he said something to me that I do not understand. We get an S rank because I took no damage, which is kind of surprising to me. And uh, we have another fairly long spell of combat to get into here. We're not even close to the end of this tutorial mission. Uh, the missions in the game, there are only like seven, but they're all fairly long with one exception. One of the levels is only like a boss fight long. Uh, and one of them, actually two of them might be really short, but five of them are like 45 minutes to an hour long each. So we're going to go on a ninja run chase through the, uh, I want to say favelas, but I'm kind of woefully uh, unlearned when it comes to African geog geographical structure or city structure. I don't know, urban structure. So we're just going to run through here. Uh, I think I might have to cut my way through this grate. It's one of those uh, chase sequences that has a lot more urgency when you actually know what you're doing in the game. The first time I did this, I, I just kind of like dirt my way through, got stuck at the gate for a long time, and then was like, oh, I don't really understand what's going on at all. But we do still have uh, another, like, two boss fights over the course of this uh, tutorial mission. The game's not shy about starting things off on the right foot when it comes to insane over-the-top action. Uh, I kind of forget what to do during this boss fight. I don't think you can parry this attack. Can you just ninja run under it? No, you can ninja run straight into it. So that's something. Uh, and jumping over it doesn't appear to work either. So instead what we're going to do is just climb up here uh, and hack the shit out of this thing. I might have repair units that I can use to heal myself. Or maybe I don't. I don't know. In any case, we're just going to chop this dude up. It shouldn't be too difficult. But I've been wrong about boss fights before. There's been boss fights in this game that have, uh, you know, kept me busy for like half an hour of retrying over and over and over. Uh, generally speaking, oh, we have to use blade mode on these missiles if I remember correctly. A lot of this in the game too, using uh, blade mode to cut out projectiles that are coming after you, which is cool! Uh, they do it in a more um, conscious way a little bit later. But for now, all we're gonna have to do is chop this dude up. Boss fights do all function on kind of a similar mechanic to this. Somehow I got healed, there must have been a repair unit inside one of those missiles. Um, 
But, yes, uh, generally boss fights do have the same kind of structure where uh, as you fight them, you do like 1% damage per strike, but eventually you get an option to go into blade mode like this, cut up an integral structure, and then, uh, you know, they're going to go down like 30%. As you can see, he's down to 0.1% right now. Um, so we're just going to wait for an opportunity, a prompt, if you will, to do something badass, like Boris saying, finish that bastard off. And then I believe we are just going to do a sweet-ass... Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies across these missiles. Blow up the Arc de Triumph, which is in Africa now for some reason. And when we get up to the top here, we'll probably have some more active gameplay. So we're just going to enter blade mode. Chop this dude's arms up. Dude, you look ripped. That's not really that funny. I apologize. We did straight up chop his arm off, though. Which, you know, I imagine if he has pain receptors, that probably hurts a great deal. So, he is not dead yet. We've been eaten, I guess. I actually totally forgot how this shakes out. I think I did the tutorial mission in two parts, because I was like, really? I was used to DMC, where DMC had 20 chapters that were all relatively short. Whereas this game has uh, five chapters, well, seven chapters, I believe. Uh, maybe eight. I can't quite remember. Uh, but they're all very, very long. Anyway, we're going to just keep going down through here, but jumping at the end. One last button prompt is my guess. Or, yep, there we go. We're just going to tear him apart like so, run up his spine. We're not going to eat his backbone, but I promise you, you know, there should be like an eaten backbone counter in this uh, Let's Play because we're going to be eating a lot of spines later. It's incentivized to take out an enemy. Oh, come on. That shouldn't be an S rank. I got hit many times. I think we have a short cutscene, and then we're going to continue onwards. We're almost to the end of the level, believe it or not. We're making fairly good time here. Uh, but... Yeah, we're, we're going to be spending a lot of time eating people's spines, cutting off their left hands. You, certain body parts are incentivized to cut off and keep safe. Uh, for example, if you take out an enemy's left hand, you can uh, get some extra information out of that. Anyway, I'll let the cutscene just go here. You know, little known fact, those guns can actually shoot from long range, so uh, next time feel free to just open fire. I guess they're worried about the president. If they knew what I knew, they wouldn't be, though. Alright, so now we are waiting at this loading screen. We're gonna be on a train. The loading screens are actually fairly short, which kind of surprises me, because this game looks pretty good. I'm playing the 360 version right now. Um, I, there is no PC version, which I know is gonna be a, a sore spot for a lot of people, especially when compared to DMC. I'm not gonna compare those games too much, even though there are some noted similarities between the two. Uh, but DMC did have a PC version, and that's gonna make it, you know, by default, probably uh, the preferred option for a lot of PC gamers anyway. So these are our two main villains that we're going to be facing for the bulk of the game. So I'll let them talk. I won't be needing my little shield here any longer. Stop! What about all the good things war has done for us? Why don't we ever hear speeches about that? Jobs, technology, oh. a common purpose. Uh. Raiden, forget me. Stop him. <laughs> you ain't listening. In? Oh, you're saying? Give war a chance! <clears throat> oh. That's where I was keeping my strawberry jam! No! Let's go. 
All right, so now we're gonna be engaged in a uh, boss fight, a pseudo boss fight against Jetstream Sam here. I'm gonna spoil things for you. This is, you know, in true Mega Man X fashion, a boss fight that is impossible to win unless there is some kind of crazy, uh, like, even when I block attacks, I take damage, but I'm not blocking attacks very well here. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna kind of expedite things and lose as fast as I can, if that makes sense. Um, but I'll let them talk during the cool cutscenes that we have here. If you think the cutscenes are going to get, you know, less frequent as the game goes on, you're gonna have a bad time. We're gonna spend a lot of time, you know, watching uh, cutscenes here. So if you haven't enjoyed the tone of the cutscenes so far, that is unlikely to change in the future. I don't mean to scare you away or anything. But as of right now, this guy is unbeatable. I can demonstrate to you. I could take some time and be like, yo, bros, check out how sweet I am at parrying. Uh, except for that time when I got cut straight through the gallbladder. Um, but what's the point? We might as well just, you know, hack and slash, mash buttons, he'll kill us, uh, and then we'll progress the story. It was a dick move, man. Someone worked very- a mason spent years of his life putting these tiles here in the hopes of revitalizing the African transportation network. Anyway, just fucking kill me, man, please. One la- there we go. I like when games do this, but I also kind of hate when games do this on the second pass, because the first time you're like, fuck, this game's gonna be hard as hell, this guy's unbeatable, and then the second time you're just like, oh, this game's unbeatable. Alright, so it's a pretty bad day for Raiden, uh, he gets all k would and his eye gets cut out, but, you know, he handles it better than most people would, he's not like, what the fuck, dude, my eye! He's just kind of instead holding his hand there, like, oh man, that kind of smarts. I'm gonna have to sleep on that. My sword is a tool of justice. And then the dirtiest trick in the Samurai Handbook! The gun sword! And again, there's a lot of arm cutting in this game. Luke Wilson would be proud. You know, obviously Raiden's not too stoked about that, uh, but again, I think this is a, a point in the game where basically we are just trying to be hit. Raiden spends a little bit of time in this game in a weakened state that we won't see for, for a little while anyway. Um, but I'll just let him hit me here because it doesn't effing matter. We're invincible! All we're kind of doing is uh, going through the motions here until this train finally exits this tunnel and we can get a move on. <clears throat> again, apologies for my voice. It's getting better! I could actually emote a little bit, but uh, it's been really bad for like five days now. I feel like riding, man. It's like I'm missing my most used appendage. Well, second most used. It's <coughs> over. <laughs> Lucky devil. <laughs>
And this is where our tutorial mission is gonna end with our hero, Armless and Eyeless. The president of a nameless country in Africa, murdered and then thrown on the side of the train tracks. Uh, and us being introduced to our main villains as well as the uh, general feeling for how this game works. I guess I got an S rank. That seems very surprising to me. But in any case, thank you guys for joining me. If you are, you know, a longtime Northern Lion fan, thank you for, uh, again, supporting another new series that I'm starting. If you're a new fan, happy to have you along for this ride, uh, no matter how short or how long that ride may be. But in any case, again... Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time when we get really into the meat of the game on Mission 1 and start cutting spines out and eating them in front of loving mothers and sisters, etc., etc. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.